two games, um, two defeats so far. Are you concerned at all? No, no, not at all. And you have to look deeper than that. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm disappointed we've lost the game and at no point did we end did we anticipate that happening or, or anything? We thought we'd get off to a good start, especially the pre-season and the group we got. But best laid plans and all that, you know, sometimes happens. But uh, one thing, I see real progress in how we play. I thought we were excellent Saturday. I really do. Look, you have to. It's hard to say that after you lost three-one away from home, and it looks like a comfortable win, but it was far from far from that. We were on the front foot from from the first second. You know, we could have scored from kickoff. We were right at them. Um, we took the game to them. We we pressed. We conceded against a run of play, um, then we scored, then we had hit the bar, then we hit the post, then Tommy Smith had a great chance, then after half time for 20 minutes we pen him in, we have great chances again and we just don't take them and then mentality shifts, you know, and uh, I'm sure if we'd just taken one of those chances it would have been a different story and that's all we got to do because you can't continue to be unlucky or lucky or whatever it is you are, you, you know, you, you'll end up being where your work is and we feel we're in a decent place that way. Tom Ince talked afterwards about needing to improve in both boxes. Do you think it is just maybe a lack of confidence at the moment? I, I don't know if it's a lack of confidence because we've got good players here and, and look, we've, we've hit the bias margins, we've hit the post margins, you know, we've we've had a, a, a glorious opportunity. So it's not, it's just a bit of rhythm, a bit of whatever, but over a season, th everything everything evens out. You end up where you, where you deserve to be. So if it's 44 games and we're in the position we are now, then trust me, one, for one, I won't be here, but two, um, we will, uh, we'd have deserved to be there. Um, so it's two games in, history tells you that nothing's won in the first weeks of August, and that's what we have to do. But what I look is, I look deeper, I look at the performance, I look at how we played, I look at what w the work we're doing on a, on a training pitch. Am I seeing that on a Saturday? Yes. So that's, that's the positive. I mentioned Tom Ince there, he got the goal back from his injury. Could he be a really important player for you this season? He is an important player. I mean, but all, they all are because we've, you know, it's a squad game now. It's not just a, a, an 11 man game, it's a squad game. And we have his real strength and, and that we, we want to get better, we want to improve, we want to be, you know, we want to be as clinical as we possibly can. And if we did that, we'd have been out of sight. Um, and then it would be a totally different mood and totally different thing, especially in this press conference. But, uh, but no, look. We, we, we're not in as bad a place as a result show because I see real progress. This time, last year, we were getting through at the end of the season. We were trying to get what we can, create an environment and so on. But now it's totally different. And I saw real good work. The players believe it. We see it. I've watched the game, as I said. So I watched it live. I watched it once more and then a half time. So to see that I wasn't delusioned uh, or delusional in any way. And, and I'm not. I see processes. I see real, real structured how we play. And I saw a fluency about our play that deserved more. When you did come in last season, you did have a lot to deal with, and uh, as you say, it was it was, was really just seeing it through to the end of the season. But has it been hard to kind of stay positive throughout that? It, look, it's been a tough time, but we knew that, and that's why you know we sacrificed what we did to come here because we could have just ra rode the crest of a wave all the way to the championship with Luton, and then, in all honesty, probably had a number of offers in the summer. But we didn't. We, we chose the club. The club chose us. We were delighted to be here. We knew it was tough, but great projects are tough and they start off in, in tough times. But we've got through that and now we've laid the foundations. Yep, we haven't got off to the best start, but as Artie says, you don't throw the baby out with, all, with the bath water. So I think perhaps maybe some people wouldn't have realised the issues you were dealing with last season. And I think there's been a real eye opener for that. Um, in the past few days, Glenn Johnson's been speaking about uh, the issues he had with Saido Berahino, and obviously we haven't heard from Berahino, but I think it just goes to show the real deep issues there were in terms of what players were dealing with and perhaps team spirit, and that's something that you've had to come in to, and, and how difficult has that been for you? Well, what we, we kept saying is we had to create an environment and a culture here, and that's what, well, when we come in, that's what we saw, that if you want to win, you, you don't just gather uh, an, expense, an expensively assembled, ha big named squad because that won't win you in. There has to be a culture and environment here so that people can flourish. And that's what we've, for four months, that's what we tried to change. And we believe we're 75% along doing that. Now we've added different ones, which has added it again. So we believe there's a good culture here. Yep. Yeah. Look, there's, there's a thing at the minute where 
we have to recover from setbacks, but that's probably the final hurdle, and then we can start moving forward. But there's a lot of good things being put in place. The owners are fantastic here, and praise the Lord they are, because you know you need time when you're changing an environment. Um, but we believe we're on a real good path, and I saw so many positives, and I was a bit baffled after Saturday, but I saw so many positives that in three, four, five months' time, we'll remember the shoots of, you know. Was it interesting to hear Glenn Johnson being so open and, and, and talking so openly? I think it's surprised a, a lot of people. Look, I, I, I genuinely haven't haven't listened to it, but I obviously a lot of people have spoken. So secondhand, I've heard about a few things and, and so on. Look, people find people speak as they find people. With the thing is, with the media now, is there's, there's a lot of people can speak openly and so on. And I got no problem with that. All I can, uh, if 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 ever I need to comment on on how I find people, then I I'll do that. But that, that's fine. Look, people knew that there was the odd issue here uh, uh, and, and so on. We did, but that's in the past now. We've got to look forward. We can't look at what's gone on and, and so on because there's still sort of fragments of, of certain things left over. But, but now, in, on the whole, we've got a wonderful football club and a wonderful environment and a great changing room. And we've had to work very, very hard. And when I say we, it don't just mean me and my staff. I mean the owners. I mean you know, the coach family, John. Uh, Tony, I've had to really work hard to get that. You've now got um, another game to get ready for this week. Um, you move away from from the league to the cup. Um, could this be your chance to to start to bring some positivity? Is, is is this game really important in that in trying to get that first win? It's important because it's the next one. So yeah, of course we know we we want to win the game. We want to create a winning environment. We we thought we did that in pre-season. It's just had a couple of setbacks um, and so on but now we have to come through that yep it's the next game so it's a chance to, to put some positivity on the board then it's a difficult game after that and it's a tough you know, tough tough month now we've got but we're, we're fully aware of the challenges and, we, and we're looking forward to it because as I said we, we've seen real real positivity and hard to know what to expect from Wigan they've had a, 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 they had a good start to the season and then a, a, a disappointing result at the weekend but that's the championship I think you know I see I've, I've watched championship games and some people's level of performance have not been as good as ours, yet they have far many, far more many points. That's the championship for you. It's a weird thing. Um, you know, you haven't got to do a lot wrong to, to lose a game, and you haven't got to do, a, you know, sometimes you haven't got to do a hell of a lot different or right to win a game. So it's it's a real tough league to do. So look, Wigan will be a tough, tough game. You know, they've had obviously two mixed results. Um, great result against Cardiff, and then Preston, but Preston's a difficult place to go, it really is. So look, we'll see. We'll see what, what happens. But all we can do is prepare how how, how Stoke City are going to play, and, and that's that's the main thing. How's your team looking injury-wise? Any issues? A, a lot stronger than we were Friday, but we've got a strong squad anyway. But we've got people like your table back now. Tom Edwards back. James McLean back. And the only one we miss is Nick Powell uh, out of a full fully fit squad. So um, we've got good options, a lot to choose from. Um, there's one or two catching up, playing catch up. You know, in, in terms of Duffy. Uh, in terms of Badu and uh, and the table, they 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 need to play catch up, but we we have them available. Obviously, we saw the the deadline pass in terms of transfers last week. Um, is there still a possibility though that you you could lose Jack Butland because there's a lot of talk about a potential move to Europe? Has there been any approaches, any interest from from European clubs in, in Jack? No, none. And to be honest with you, uh, this is the, the I think. Uh, Pochettino said something, and I don't mean to be disrespectful. Maurizio said the other day that it's just ludicrous how a European top league window can shut three weeks after hours because it can be disruptive to to have we we you know it's, it's a disruption to us to even have that that name. Everyone should shut at exactly the same time so the people because I don't think I think European ones don't have to do their business. They don't have to be in order by by the time that that and it puts us at, at a disadvantage. So. No, we've had no no offers, and to be honest with you, it would need to be a, 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 a massive, massive club to be able to afford um, the, 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 the the valuation of Jack. Has it affected him at all, having all the speculation? And well, it's bound to, because he's had two summers now where he's been constantly linked, and no one, and someone said to me the other day, actually, and no one speaks of Jack Butland, Stoke, the fantastic Stoke keeper. Everyone speaks of Jack Butland, England. Is he going to lose England place? Where's he going? Bournemouth, Villa. Well, he's a Stoke City player. This is a massive club. It's a great club. It's a great club. No one speaks of Jack Butland as, as, as Stoke's number one. And that's strange. 
because he's our player, he's under contract, he's valued, we love him, we care for him. Seems disrespectful in a way. Thank you. Hey Nathan, um, obviously some championship managers might be tempted to bring the changes in their squad for the League Cup this week. Bearing in mind we could really do with getting that first win, does that make you feel like sticking with the same team or would you still make changes? In the we'll do the right thing for the football club regardless of 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 what of past results. If it's needed to make changes to one freshen up to two give game time, then we'll do that. If it's not, we won't. But whatever we do, we'll, we'll be very very competitive because we have a very competitive squad. So we have to trust our players, whichever ones are, are picked. But I'm not tempted and panicking or saying, oh, I need this, I need that. No, no, we have, we have processes we believe in, and we stick to those. Sounds like what you've just been saying. You've got more options now in terms of personnel. We've got good options. I mean, look, we, effectively, we we two we couldn't play James McLean on the weekend due to a family issue, and 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 Tom Edwards got injured on Friday. But we were able to bring in two. Well, not bring in because Tommy Smith played the game before. But we had two very good fullbacks who, who played that. that was it. And then obviously Badu and, and the table. We're not. I'm been able to use yet because of the African Nations Cup. So. We've got good, good options. They now come back into the frame and come back into the fold. So we have a good, strong squad. It's not a big squad, but it's a very, very strong squad. So whatever changes we make, we have two in every position. So it won't be like, all right, we've weakened it there, because we have established professionals in two in every position near enough. Nathan, sport at the highest level defines you as a, as a, as a person. And mentally, it must be difficult, even though some of these players are new and you brought players in, but t to lose a game as they did on Saturday when they played so well, have you had to work on the mentality of the squad today or, or over, over Saturday when you spoke to them? I think we always have to, and you've got to be careful what you say because afterwards you, it's easy to rant and rave and shout and throw things and stuff, but they didn't deserve that. You know, there's performance levels. Yes, we debriefed today and showed them where just those tweaks that we need because we're not. We're this close to being a very good side. We really are, and I'm not waffling by that. I couldn't have said that last year. I really couldn't have because we were getting through and seeing what we had and so on. But now we're really close. Yes, the margins are small, and we've got to make sure we come out on the right side of those. But I saw real, real positivity when I look back. I, I feel for him a little bit, but we have to man up. We have to grow up. We have to learn from those mistakes and then move forward. Because as you said, we we'll remember the shoots of of, of Charlton because we will, because I thought we were excellent at times, we really, really were. We come right out of the block, we went right after the team, away from home, and and that's a good thing to do, because that's a bravery. It's it's tactically astute to sit back and deny space and so on, but we didn't, we came right out and we were brave, and I'm, I'm pleased and proud of them for that. When you look back at your own performance in terms of how you manage the team in that game, if you had your time over again, would you change any of the substitutions you made? I wouldn't have made one. I wouldn't have made one when I did. So I'm brave enough to say, and I've told him that, and I told Ryan Woods that at, uh, when I got off the bus at Stoke at 10.15 on Saturday night. I, I, I probably made an error there um, because I didn't need to change it. But that's something I'm, I'm bold enough and honest enough to say because we were in control of the game. It's just I wanted to win it. I felt we were in the ascendancy and I felt something different would have given us a little push. Um, but as it was, it probably had a, a, the adverse effect. So yeah, I take full responsibility for that. Um, still, we had enough out there to win the game because we didn't drastically change anything. We had one, you know, we made one personnel change that I felt would have given us an, an, an attacking impetus. It didn't, and in hindsight, yeah, I would have. And lastly, for me, Adam Davis is he fully fit? Because you notice when he's warming up with the other keepers, he doesn't seem to do the same stuff. Yeah, he is. Look, we use three keepers, and he uses three keepers. He keeps them all involved. They have a bond and and. Uh, and it helps out with, with the work, but um, he is, he's been brought in. Look, it's difficult when you come in from a, a club, and Liam Lindsay had the same thing. It's a massive club, it's a different club, the pressure's here. Without being disrespectful, are totally different, you know. I found that at and, and Luton's an extremely pressured club. Um, so it, it just takes a bit of time. But the others were slightly ahead of him in pre-season, but he's, he's a wonderful keeper who's hungry, who, who I've spoken to, who's spoken to me. Um, and he's not come here to, to be content and to be number three. And if he's good enough to be in the, the top one or top two, he'll play because we have competition. There's no pecking order here. Thank you. Right, folks, thank you. Cheers. Thank you very much.